Hello, this is Charlene Mosier from Sound Sewing Silverdale, Washington and the Foff Creative Sewing Lacey, Washington. Today I'm going to do a how to use your Expression 710 video. This is a, uh, the Expression line is pretty high up in the Foff line with a beautiful 10 inch throat. Great for quilters, home deck sewers, crafters, anything that really needs that extra space in there. It is electronic, which is very nice because when you turn it on, it gives you a very beautiful touch screen and amazing lighting. You have lighting underneath in here as well as all the way around here and a needle threader. So we're going to go over the basics of what came with your machine, uh, how to thread and wind a bobbin as well as install the bobbin, and then go through basic functions. So let's get started. So the first thing I like to do is go over what you got. So we're going to go over uh, what you what I got with the Expression 710. But then I'm going to tell you what your book says, because uh, the book is shared also with the Expression 720. So the 710 owners, you will find a buttonhole foot. This is in the back of your accessory tray that's on the machine. Okay, They don't put it normally in the foot bag when you get it. They usually put it in the back to protect this foot. You also would have got four to five bobbins. A thread net, this is used to actually, if you have a spool of thread that's misbehaving, like a metallic or something, you would actually use this thread net and put it right over the top of it to keep the thread from wrapping around the post and keep it going off in the direction it needs to come off. So that is what the thread nets are for, so your persnickety threads. This is not in the book, however, um, both of our expression 710 and 720s, when we received them, came with this. This is actually a cleaning cloth to clean your touch screen. So you don't put any kind of chemical on there, you just use this to help wipe off any fingerprints. Great for yourself on your devices as well. The next thing that we have here are your pressure feet. The 0A foot, this is a foot that's actually located directly on the machine. The 1A foot, which is your pattern foot. Uh, with IDT, your 2A foot, which is your satin foot without IDT, and your uh, number 3 foot, this is your blind hem or overcast foot, and then we have your number 4, your zipper foot. This foot is one that's commonly misused. I just want to point that out to you. If you want to put on a zipper, it goes on in this direction, so you can either snap it on the left side or the right side with the prongs away from you. That is to use for your IDT, okay? So many of us want to use it this way because to us that makes sense with a zipper. Uh, I will admit I was one of those in the first year I owned my FOF and then I went into my local dealer and said, hey, you know, I don't like how it does zippers because it's not working right. I should be able to use the walking foot. And he chuckled at me and said, you need to turn the foot around. And sure enough, I went back home, turn it back around to use it this way. It works beautifully. So... <laughs> Uh, that's how I learned. And then it does come with a quarter inch foot, a free motion uh, sensormatic foot, a five or ten pack of needles, seam ripper, quilter's toolbar, which is this little guy right here, quilter's toolbar, a cleaning brush, a screwdriver, and then you should have two large caps, one medium, one small, and then a felt. Now, if you look in the book, though, the book is also shared with the Expression 720. And in there, they are also going to tell you that you will see a single needle plate. That only comes with the Expression 720. It also shows the 8A foot. Again, this is a foot that only comes with the 720 for maxi stitches. And that the 710 doesn't have those stitches, only the 720. And then a knee lift comes with the 720, not the 710. All right, so we're going to head back over to our machine and start to uh, learn how to thread it up. All right, here we are at the top view of the machine and we're just going to open up this flap by just putting your finger underneath the lid and opening it. And it, on the 710, it does show you all your stitches. If you're watching this video and you have the 720, you'll find you don't have stitches on your panel because there's just so many that they couldn't fit them up here and have them a reasonable size. What we're going to do is we are going to take a large spool cap and we're going to put it right on your spool pin and that does just pull up and we put it right on your spool pin. Then we're going to take a felt and we're going to put that one on and lay this back down. This will always stay there. You always have these two there to help support the spool. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my spool of thread and I'm just going to pop it on here and then you have another large, a medium, and a small cap left. You want to select the cap that is appropriate to be just 
just bigger than your spool you're using. You don't want to go too big because then your as your spool gets thinner, you'll get this this torque situation with the thread roll get really tight because it's coming from a very small part of the leftover spool and try and get around outside this. And you don't want to go smaller than your spool itself because if your spool has little nicks on it, you're going to catch those nicks with the thread. So you want it to rub on the spool cap you actually have selected. So we're going to wind a bobbin first. The first thing is we always have to go in here, okay? So let's see if I can show you guys this a little bit better. This little area here. I know it's going to be hard, my hands are going to get in the way, but we're going to try our best. So we're going to go in here and we grab my thread, my tail's to the left, and I am going to get my hand out of the way. I am going to floss it down all the way in there. Okay, so it's going all the way down. So my backside here went underneath this guy. Okay, so it's all the way in here. Okay, so let's see if I can show you that one more time. Of course, I'm watching this from a little little screen. You guys probably watch this on a big monitor, so you could probably see it better. But I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to go under, oops, I missed, underneath and in there. The next thing we're going to do is go to this guy here. Now, this guy has this little lip that's sticking out right there. It has two ways to thread. If you're going to wind a bobbin like we're going to do, you have to bring the thread on top of this lip and pull it in and all the way around. Okay? And then you'll feel that there's tautness on this. That is to wind the bobbin. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go here, move it over. So I'm doing the, me the metal cl clamps in back, and then I'm going to grab myself a bobbin. Your bobbin will only fit on this machine one way, so with the forward up, it will then be able to snap on here. If you were to put the forward down, and try to put it on here, it won't go, okay? They have designed this so you can't, if you're using the FOF bobbins, you cannot put these in incorrectly. And right now the FOF bobbins that you would purchase if you need more bobbins for this machine would be the J bobbins, okay? That's any time you buy feet or bobbins from FOF, in the FOF packaging, it'll be with the J letter on it to indicate this machine. Next thing I'm going to do is on the top of each bobbin where there is the logo, I have a little hole which I'm going to thread my thread through the middle and up through that hole. And you only have one, it's on the top. And I'm going to put it over here, okay, and I'm going to push it over. At that time, I have something on my screen. Let me show you. All right, so on my screen, I have a start stop button on my screen. This has a separate bobbin winder so that I can press this. And now my bobbin is winding and I'm holding on to my tail over here. That is very important. I am holding on to my tail. I can press the screen again to stop it and take my scissors and cut that tail once it has gone up and down a few times and then go ahead and fill it. What will happen is, is it's not going to look as full on the top as it will from the bottom. This bobbin is slightly tapered but it will be pretty full. If you do find that it's filling one side a little bit more than the other, like mine right now is filling the top a little more, I'm just going to push it down a little bit and make sure the bottom's getting some. It just sometimes depends on the spool itself and how it's coming off. Once it starts to hesitate, the bobbin itself will start to hesitate, like mine is starting to, I'm going to use the stop key. Then I'm going to push my bobbin back to the left, pull it off, and this guy right here, there is this little guy right here, is a thread cutter. Okay, so now let's get more in front of the machine so we can show you how to thread this. All right, I tried different views. I think this is going to be the best view. Okay, so what we're going to do is pull our thread out, and we need to go through this again. You always go through this piece to thread the machine. Now remember, this one up here, I had told you, had a uh, a little lip sticking out and before to wind the bobbin we went on top of that lip well we want to now go below that lip and now when you pull on you'll feel that feel that there really is not much tautness at all it's pretty free flowing because it's just now a guide I'm going to go straight down into my tension assembly you will see there is a bar in here it does not matter which side you go on and then I am going to come now let's get you guys to come down and join me a little bit Okay, we are, I have my thread down here now. I'm going to come down and around the bottom of this nose and back up. 
and then inside here I'm going to turn my hand wheel until my take up lever comes up all the way okay let's see if I can so this is what I'm looking for is my take up lever making sure that comes up all the way and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw it from right to left around that and pull all the way forward and then come directly back down okay all right all right so now we're down by the needle area I just have brought the thread from the take up lever so over on the left hand side over here I'm going to put it in the thread guide so that's over on this side that's open next thing I'm going to do is I am going to use my needle threader to do that I'm going to push my needle down on my my foot down so that is going to be right here my foot down the whole time we thread it within the up position we have to that makes your tension assembly which is right here actually uh, stay open but now I'm getting ready to use my needle threader so I want my tension dial to close to help pull my thread so I'm going to just put that down and my pressure foot now has gone down so the next thing I do is this needle threader just pulls straight down that's all you do just straight down and then I am going to, I sometimes grab this as I come down, but there's a hook right here that I need to put my thread through. And then, let's see if this will, it will not. There we go. There is a little, you'll find that there's a little opening right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thread in here as I come down, and then I'm going to put my thread inside this little opening on the side over here. There's two metal pieces. When I pull my, th my threader away, I let go of that thread, and it makes a loop in the back for me to grab. Okay, let's see if I can show you that again. Okay, so I'm going to bring this straight down. Try and get this uh, to focus better. Okay, I'm going to bring this straight down. And I go under the hook, the hook right here, and then there is two metal pieces sticking out over here. I go in the middle of those, and when I go to release the thread, or just let go of your thread to make that loop. Okay, now to do the bobbin. All right, here we are, better set for putting in the bobbin. I'm going to put this slide back on. I do apologize, this is new equipment for me that we just got to make this better for us, and I do like how everything's going but I'm obviously still learning because I'm having problems with the focuser so just bear with me but um, we'll just troop forward and we will get through this so what we're going to do is we're going to take off the bobbin cover by pulling it towards you and then just let you know this piece here in the center of this this one right here that is a magnifier I think you can see that as I move it around so what's really nice about that is sometimes you need to know what kind of needle you have and you don't remember the size you can actually read it some of them with this magnifier the next thing we're going to do is we are going to install the bobbin. Now this is again, just like I had said earlier, the bobbin on top only goes in one way to wind it. Well that's true with threading it as well. The FOF logo needs to be up. If you try to put with the FOF logo down, it will not fit in there. Okay, so if you are using a pre-wound bobbin, which you can use, a pre-wound bobbin would be um, the L size by the pre-wound companies. And uh, just don't use the cardboard ones. The cardboard ones are inappropriate for the drop-ins like this. You want the ones with the plastic side. So your thread always goes over the top and to the left. And then that way when you pull on it, it goes counterclockwise. Now right in here, I'm going to use this. There's an opening right here. I think you can see that. And I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to put it into that opening. And I like to put my finger on the bobbin so when I pull it up, you heard that snap? It's in the tension now. You've got to hear or feel that snap. And then it's going to go up above this piece here. And I come down to right in front of here. Then we put this back on. It's got to be on most of the way. And then slide it forward. And this is a blade right here so I can just cut it. Okay, really easy. You do not have to pull up the bobbin when you start to sew because we did make a real nice tail for it. So when we start to sew, it will come up right away. So let's start playing with our machine now that it's threaded. Okay, I'm on the right side of the machine right now. So you'll see the FOF logo in the front. So I'm actually physically over on the right hand side because I want to show you that there is actually a place to put your stylist right in here, which is really cool. And it locks in there. And then down below here, you have where the foot control would go right here, which I need to go get my foot control or I can use start stop key. And my power goes here, but you'll find a USB stick 
um, option here. That is so that you can upgrade the machine. The machine is upgradable whenever they come out with an upgrade. So if you go out to foff.com and go into uh, machines and support, you can go out there and find your machine, the Expression 710 or Expression 720, and check for upgrades. You could also register your machine. When you bought your machine, you got a registration form, and you could register it online as well. And click to notify you when there's uh, news or updates or anything and Foff would update you as well. Now if you bought your machine from us, anytime you come in for a cleaning, if you tell us that you would like us to check for upgrades, we will install them for you, but you must request it. We never assume and install it for anybody. That is a requested um, service we do. All right, so that's the right hand side of the machine and now we're going to go over the front panel of the machine. Right here we are at the front panel of our machine. So right away you'll find right here that these are our pressure foot up and pressure foot down. So if I was to push this, and let's just look down here, I'm going to push the up and my pressure foot will go up. If I press the up again, it'll go up in the extra high lift and it will hover there for me to come in and uh, put anything thick underneath there. What's also nice is it also kind of drops the feed dogs a little bit in the extra high lift. And again, that was by pressing the up twice to get that up there. If I get, uh, that way my feed dogs will go down a little bit, so if I put anything that could snag in here, my, it won't snag as I put, put it underneath to get ready to sew. If I went down to the normal height, I just press the up again, it comes down to the normal height. Now if I press the down key, it will come down, or I could just start to sew and the foot will come down automatically. But let's say I'm putting in a piece of fabric and I am going to push, again, this down key right here for my pressure foot down. And I'm going to press it, and now I want to make sure I can fine-tune it. If I press it again, the down, it will come up and hover just high enough so I can come in with my fabric or whatever I'm sewing and move it right into place and get exactly where I want. Now I could just start to sew or press my pressure foot down again, and I'll be ready to go. Okay, so that was these keys here. So pressure foot up for normal, up for extra height, which lowers the feed dogs. And they're not lower, lower. They're just dropped a little bit so you can get your thick item underneath. Once you start to sew, they'll continue going. Then this is your pressure foot down, but also if you come down again, it'll go to that hover mode so you can fine tune your fabric. This one here is a key I love. I wish more machines out there in the industry had it. It's called your pattern restart. So if I was to go and select a stitch, and no matter if what changes I might have made to the stitch, if I start to sew and something happens and I have to start over, or uh, maybe I had completed that seam, I now want to start another seam, I want to make sure I'm at the beginning with all my settings, I'd press this one and it'll take me back to stitch one. So back to the beginning of the heart, back to the beginning of the car, uh, the heirloom stitches, whatever I'm doing. This key here is an instant tie-off, and when I go over the tie-offs, I will talk about that. And this one is your start-stop key. So you can run the machine without a foot control, but if you use this, I really recommend, recommend using it in tandem with this key here. This is your speed control. So if I was to touch this, I get a little icon right here on my screen that shows up, and what that is, is it's just these bars, and it's half the bars are lit and half are not. So I'm automatically a half speed. See how this has a little triangle by it? That means that this has a menu option. So if I long hold this, it'll open up a menu on my screen. And so this one has five settings for my speed control. So if um, right now I can see I can only get four of the settings. So if I can bring this up, I can bring it down. You know, every time I click it, it'll go up or down depending on where I want it. And all the way down, it's gonna be very slow. The machine's gonna stitch very slow. All the way up to here, it's gonna be three quarters of the speed of the machine just about. Well, yeah, kind of. There's five speeds, so four fifths of the speed. The only way you can get the very top speed is if you turn this back off and the icon is gone. And now I have the full range of the machine. Okay, this one is your needle down key, so as soon as I press it, if you watch over here, I'll put my needle down, it will go down immediately, and every time I stop, because this is now lit, every time I stop, it will stop in the down position. If I press it again, it will come right back up. We can also achieve that with our foot control, by just giving our foot control a tap, and this is your scissors to cut both your top and bottom thread. Okay, so now let's work on the screen itself. Okay, let's get this all in here the best we can. Trying to get this 
zoom the best I can. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything back to normal. Okay, so what we have here, if I zoom out a little bit, I think it will focus a little better. There we go. So I have my picture of my stitch right here of what we're doing, and it defaults to straight stitch. The next thing it's telling me is it wants foot 0A, and that is the foot that came directly on my machine. So if I grab my foot, it's this one right here, and I know it's not going to want to focus on it, but my 0 will be on this side and my A will be on this side. Okay, so that's the foot it's recommending for us to put on. And then it looks like there's a boot right on top of here on top of grass. That's what it looks like to me. What that is showing us is that my IDT, which is my built-in dual transfer system, basically a walking foot, needs to, should be engaged and my feed dog should be up. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, let me pull away and we will show you. First of all, the feed dog system is right down here. So if I push it to the left, that will permanently drop my feed dogs in the down position. If I do want them up, I gotta push it to the right and then hold down to my tails. I will take a stitch by turning my hand wheel towards me and then my feed dogs will fully come up. It is a mechanical movement to bring them up. So you do have to turn your hand wheel towards you. I do do that manually. I don't normally just start to sew because I like to know that it's come up and everything's okay. Now let's show you the IDT. Now I'm on the left side of the machine and this is the IDT, the built-in walking foot, which right now is engaged like they had uh, suggested on the front panel of the machine for this stitch. If I don't want it, I put my fingers on either side of it and I pull it straight down and away and then it will go directly up. And any foot, if I push on my front toes of my foot, it will come off. Any foot that has this cut out in the back can be used with the IDT. So you have several feet that came with it that can be done that way and also several feet you can purchase for uh, certain sewing applications that will allow you to use the IDT. So pretty much anytime you want the top layer to feed with the bottom layer or if you're doing sheer fabric or stretchy fabric, you really should have this down. If you're a quilter, you should always have it down. But if you need to ease in a seam, so that means that you have one fabric and another fabric and you need to kind of stretch them together to make them fit then you do not want that on because its job is to feed the top layer of fabric actually exactly the same pace and the same distance as the bottom fabric because this is a this has teeth on it and your walking foot has teeth on it to pull them together at the same time both in the forward and in the reverse motion okay so it will work in reverse where attachments cannot because you can add an attachment walking foot to any machine just about but it only works in the forward motion this one being integrated into the system will work in the forward and in the reverse motion okay so if you're trying to ease a seam it is not appropriate to have that down because you will be fighting the foot because it's going to try to keep those fabrics together because that's its job that's what we're asking it to do when it's engaged so I always sew with an engage unless uh, my foot does not allow me or if I um, am trying to ease a seam. So again, that's what this was telling us up here, the 0A with the, the boot, which is your IDT, and then it looks like the grass. Right here, this would be normally your width control, plus or minus, but because um, I'm in straight stitch right now, this would be my needle positions. So if you look at this stitch here, that's exactly how it's going to sew. So you have to think about this, that your sewing foot is right here, okay, and that is exactly how it's going to sew for you. And that is a actual size. So if I was to plus this, my needle is going to move to the right in my, my plate area. And uh, sure enough, if I look over here, I know it's probably going to be hard to see, but we'll try. If I look over here, as I'm moving this, my needle bar is moving left to right depending on how I move this. So you can do with a, a perfect or I'm sorry, a scant quarter inch foot. It has an opening in there so you can move your needle. I think it's a couple clicks, one to the left, one in the center, one to the right. So you could really fine tune your quarter inch. So that's one reason why you'd want to do that. If you were top stitching on a garment and you want to get as close to that edge as possible, you could use a narrow edge foot as your guide and be able to um, move your needle over to the edge of your fabric and get it really nice and, and straight. This right here is my stitch length. 2.5 is a standard stitch length in millimeters. That means every 2.5 millimeters you're going to get another needle penetration to create the stitch.
So I can plus it up, so plussing it up would be, make it more like a basting stitch, or I could bring it down and make it much smaller. I believe you can go all the way to zero, which is not moving at all. So uh, you, you have full control in half millimeter increments on how to change that length. And this is your tension, and I don't normally change my tension because I feel the machine does do a pretty good job. As long as I'm doing my job of giving it the same thread top and bottom, it's going to, um, or at least the same weight, it's going to give me the best ability it can. And mine, I have to throw it something really strange for me to want to change that. Um, so I usually just leave that alone. You will see this change though as you go from stitch to stitch, and that's because the machine is uh, smart enough to know where to put the tension for each stitch. And sometimes it will change if you make a lot of changes in this setting over here, it will change where it needs to be for your settings. Okay, right up here is your free motion. It looks like a little squiggly line. So if I touch that, I have three free motion options. And so only one came actually with this machine, which is the sensormatic free motion. That is the bottom one. The spring free motion foot and the dynamic spring free motion foot is extra. And there is probably, oh my gosh, you have a ruler foot. So you could do ruler quilting with this. You have a echo foot for doing echoing. You have uh, the dynamic foot. You have an open. Uh, you, you have a lot. <laughs> if you come in and say, "I'm a quilter. What feet do you have?" We can show you easily about 12 different feet because of how many styles they have. So they've really have catered to us uh, quilters in trying to give us everything we need, or even free motioners. And I know there's a lot of you free motion embroiders out there that don't do it by. Uh, computer that you do it free motion yourself. They've given us a lot of tools to be able to do that kind of stuff and the three settings that we need for it. So we're not going to do that right now. I'm just going to press OK. And you will find that you can free motion mostly any machine, any stitch in here. Does not mean that it's going to look like the stitch that you have chosen, but a lot of uh, machine and free motioners like to have the zigzag movement of decorative stitches while they're free motioning as they make their fills. And that's why we can free motion any stitch pattern on here with the exception of buttonholes and I believe the darning and bar tacking. We can't free motion those. But all the other ones we should be able to. Okay, the next thing that I like to do is just do a plain straight stitch so you can see this sew. All right, so here we are so you can see my needle. I just take in a, some fabric and just fold it in half so we can play. And I'm going to push the, the, the fabric, uh, the pressure foot down and push the pressure foot down again so I can hover and put this in. I do have my IDT engaged and I'm just going to sew. So by just uh, stepping on the foot control, it lowered my foot all the way and away I go. Now I'm going to touch my scissors, so as I'm sewing, I'm going to press my scissors as I'm sewing. And what that does is it activates the tie off a cut and it raises my foot for me so I'm ready to go to my next seam. The other thing it does is it does a very nice tie off uh, right in within one stitch and then it pulls both my tails to the back, okay? And that way I have easy cleanup. So let's say I wanted to uh, pivot with this machine. So right now my pressure foot's up and if I start to sew, it'll just lower it. And when it starts to sew, it did tie off at the beginning because my machine's turned that on. So I, I could show you that in a moment. But now I stopped and let's say I want to pivot. I can either use my needle down key on the screen or just tap my foot control for one stitch. My needle goes down and then my foot pops up so that I could turn a corner. So I could just keep doing that. So what's nice about that is if you're doing appliques or uh, you're doing binding or even if you're garment sewing, you're doing top stitching around the garment or a bag, you can uh, do this very easily and turn without you having to have that pressure foot lifter constantly going up and down where you're, you're doing it yourself. So I can have both my hands where they belong directly on my fabric so I can actually do this myself. So let me grab a sample here. A good example of that would be this bag here. We did this applique piece and we did this decorative stitch all the way around. And we uh, basically, when we got the corner, we did the needle down, turn, did a pattern restart. So we were at the beginning of the stitch and then continued down and stopped with the needle down. So raise the foot so I could turn, pattern restart, and go all the way down. Okay, and that's how we did all these applique pieces. That's actually a computer bag that we made in a class a long time ago. 
Okay, so now as I'm sewing, again, if you don't want the tie off, you just want to cut, don't be sewing and press your scissors. If you're not sewing, you press your scissors, you're just going to get a cut, okay? So if you want the tie off at the end of the pattern, at the end of the heart, the end of the flower, you would press the uh, scissors while the machine is in motion and it'll finish that sequence, that sewing sequence, then tie off and cut for you. Now I had told you a moment ago, so that was using the scissors that I showed you earlier. I had told you about this one. This is an immediate tie off. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go select another stitch real quick. So I'm going to go into my menu. If I go into my menu here, I can see all my categories. And those categories line up with these categories that we have on our front panel. So for instance, if I wanted to go to this scallop here, the second scallop, that's in 4.1. Okay, so let's come back down to my screen here. And then what we're going to do is I see I have category 4, so I'm going to touch it. 4.1 says scallop edge, and then I want the second scallop in the menu on my lid, so I'm going to pick number two. And there it is. My width has changed, my length has changed, and then my tensions have changed. All right. <clears throat> so just so you guys know, sometimes I do have to stop because I am filming this in the store, and as customers come in, I do need to pause it. So uh, we're back, and um, <clears throat> so you might hear some things in the background, but that's okay. We, um, we are doing this lesson right here at the store, and we are doing good. So what we're going to do next is your screen has changed a little bit. So I went over that your width and your length and your tensions are right here. But what's also changed is the foot. It's telling us to put a 2A foot and now a piece of paper has shown up. That is telling us that it is recommending that we actually use a stabilizer behind our fabric. So like a tearaway, you can get them at any craft store or sewing store. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it, basically what you're going to do is you're going to have your fabric and then take your tearaway stabilizer and just put right right behind it. That's just going to help stabilize your fabric as you're doing the decorative stitch on it. And then I do want to turn on, and they are on, but I want to show you why. Is right here, and you'll notice mine are green, and if you're doing this in front of your sewing machine, they may not be green. It's I'm going to touch these, and these are the tie-offs. So tie-off beginning, tie-off the end, and the scissor cut. Now, Right now, I've just turned them off because <clears throat> now they're white. So I'm going to turn them back on by saying tie-off beginning, tie-off the end, and a scissor cut. And I'm going to close the menu because I like to keep my menus closed. And I can see they're green here. This is something that the machine will remember when you uh, turn off the machine. It will always remember until you go in and reprogram it. And it's going to remember it from stitch to stitch. So what I've done is, is I've told it that I want it to do a, a tie off in the beginning, a secure stitch in the beginning, sew my decorative stitch, and when I tell it that I'm ready for it to end, to <clears throat> I finish the decorative stitch with a tie off and a scissor cut automatically. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here now and let's get right down here. And the first thing is, remember I said that <clears throat> it wants a foot change. So I'm going to push my fingers down on the front of my foot to just snap that off and pull that out. It asked for a 2A foot, so if I grab the 2A foot, it's right here. And you're going to notice it's solid in the back. It has a 2 on the left and an A on the right. And if I look at the back, this is concaved. It's got an indentation in there. Whereas my 0A foot, which was just on, is not. It's nice and flat back here. That's because your 0A foot is your utility foot. So if you're hemming your jeans, or just doing basic sewing, you're going to use your 0A foot because that's what it's meant for. So it is meant to go automatically over those jean seams and stuff. Whereas the 2A foot is your satin pattern foot. And so we don't want the teeth of the walking foot to snag on our satin stitches. So I'm going to disengage it. So remember earlier I showed you put your fingers on either side, pull it down and away. And now I can put this foot on. I do have to disengage the walking foot to put this foot on. Now I have no pressure foot lifter. <clears throat> That's been taken away. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take, see that bar right here? I'm going to line it up just right underneath the claw of my foot, of my ankle, and I'm going to push straight up so it attaches. If you have a hard time attaching it and you can't get it to stay and you know you're lining those up, check that IDT. Make sure it's disengaged, that it is off. And so see if it was down, be down here, but we have it up, okay? All right. 
<laughs> a lot of moving around of this. Okay, so now what I would do is I have my stabilizer underneath and my fabric on top, and I'm go ahead and lower my pressure foot, and I'm gonna push it down again to hover. Okay, so now what's going to happen is it's automatically going to tie off as I sew. Okay, and now I'm just going to let it sew one or two of these. And this satin stitch is um, staying within the 9mm default of this machine. And when I'm ready, I'm going to touch my reverse key, which is right here. By touching it, this light showed up to say I'm doing the end of the pattern. And when it reached the end of the tie off, End of the end of the sequence, it tied off and it cut, and again pulling both of my tails to the back. Okay, so that's not you, you get the same thing with the scissors. You get to tie off at the end, but it's not programmed with the scissors. The scissors, um, I said that wrong. I'm I apologize. That is a built-in program of the scissors. That if you press the scissors while the machine's in motion, it's automatically going to tie off at the end and cut. Whereas I programmed it to do the same thing, but tie off at the beginning and use my reverse key while in motion to activate the tie off at the end and cut. Now looking at the stitch, I can see now I used a regular thread so it's not as pretty as I'd like, but I can see that it's kind of sparse. A lot of your sewing stitches are actually designed and have been tested on 30 weight thread. So I'm using everyday sewing weight, which is a 50 weight thread. So it's not as full as I like it. So if I come back over here, oops on my screen and I touch I touch the center of what would be my length the middle one here I get a new control and it's density right now it's 0.4 so that's how far apart my stitches are my zigzag width from stitch point to stitch point is 0.4 millimeters apart so if I bring this down it's just going to start making it more satiny so I did 0.2 okay let's go ahead and try that out now I just started to sew, so it just automatically lowered my foot. Now it's going to feel like it's sewing a little bit slower, and that's because your stitch length is so close. Again, we'll use my reverse key to activate the end tie off, and when it gets the end of that sequence, it will then tie off and cut and raise the foot. And again, that's because of the, how I programmed my cut, tie off a moment ago. And see, now look at that. See, that was a lot more bold because we Put the stitches closer together. Now if I wanted to see what it would be the other direction, so right now it's at the point two, I'm going to go up here and make it point one. Actually this one goes farther. Wow! Point <laughs> one point five. And I can see on the screen what it's going to look like. But if you don't trust the screen, which you should trust the screen, but if you don't trust the screen, let's just try it. And this is going to feel like it's going to sew a lot faster because this the uh, zigzag stitches are 1.5 millimeters apart now so they are really far apart and you'll see what I mean see that 1.5 millimeters apart so that's why they look like that so the smaller the number the tighter the bigger the number the far farther apart they get and again how did I re achieve that let me show you again is any satin stitch right here that has the, the stitch length is this is a symbol for the stitch length if I touch the middle of that I get a new setting okay so let's go pick another stitch here and one of my favorite stitches is actually in category 5.3 so I'm going to scroll over I'm going to touch 5 and I'm going to touch 0.3 and it is going to be probably towards the bottom of the menu yep number 16 I just love this stitch and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my width down to the smallest it will go and my length down to the smallest it will go. Actually, let's make it a little bit longer. Okay. Now remember, I said I want a satin. I might want satin. Nope, this one doesn't have it. This has something else. Oh, no, I'm not going to show you that yet. Sorry. <laughs> That's for later. Um, so this one doesn't, when I just press it, I'm not getting that satin option because it, not the whole thing is a satin stitch. Okay, but you could definitely change your length and your width. It still wants foot 2A, and so now I'm going to sew this. And it's going to be uh, quite a bit smaller. So I use my reverse key to activate the tie off. See, this is the nice, nice small stitch, that one right there. If I was take it back to default here, well, before I do that, wait, 
Let's not jump around too much. So I changed this to a four millimeter wide. So there is another feature on here. So what I'm going to do right now before, so I can show you this, is I'm going to just sew. And I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to just tell it to do a pattern restart because I want to show you something. So a pattern restart. Now, there's another feature with this machine that's quite cool. I'm sorry I have to keep bouncing this, this, um, the stand everywhere, but I'm having to sew around it. <laughs> I'm getting better about doing that. Okay, so in the zigzag motion on most of these stitches, you have another menu in. So if I touch it, it goes zero, zero. Because I'm less than a nine millimeter, I can actually move this stitch within the sewing field of my stitch. Because my, my uh, stitch is four millimeter wide, I can go, I. Uh, I could go, let's see here, four millimeters. I could go two and a half millimeters to the left and two and a half millimeters to the right, roughly. No, nope, exactly, okay? So what I mean by that is, that's all I've done is I moved it in my sewing field, two and a half millimeters. Now, I am going to come down here and I'm going to sew. I did not, I did not cut my thread or anything. So I want to see if I can show you how this works. So I'm going to sew this a bit. Then I am again just going pattern restart. And now I'm going to bring this over the other way, all the way over to the right, a positive 2.5 millimeters. And again, I haven't picked it up or anything. I'm going to sew this one a bit. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so now I'm going to tell it to do the tie off at the end and the cut. So here we go. What you're seeing here is this is when I stitched it in the center after I shrunk it. Then I told it to move it to the left of my sewing field. So it stitched over here. Then I took, turn, told it to move to the right of my sewing field. So it stitched over here. So this is not something I would do like this on a project. But where you would use this is if I am trying to do something on the very edge of this decorative stitch right uh, of this edge and I put my foot down and I am trying to get that decorative stitch as close as I can to this, but I can't move my fabric all the way under where I want. That means I can move my stitch over to the edge, which is what I did. I moved it over to the edge. And that allows me to stitch more closer to the edge and use a decorative stitch more like a top stitch. Uh, another way you can use this is if you're trying to do binding and you want to use a decorative stitch to end the binding and you need you can't seem to get it lined up where you want. Well, if it's less than nine millimeters, you can use it to move it into the field, left or right. That's a bit advanced, so if that's beyond you right now, it won't be later once you get to know this machine. But see how I was able to get that really lined up here? You, that will be something that maybe later you're going to say, hey, can I do this? And we'll look at you and say, yeah, yeah, actually you can. Okay, so if you feel that's way beyond you, that's okay. When they first showed it to me, I was like, what? But that's okay. <laughs> All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep practicing playing with our stitches here. So I'm going to go back into my main menu. And I think you can see every time you want to select a stitch, you have to go into your main menu. And I can pick my categories. And you have eight categories in here, which has multiple subcategories in each side. So for instance, I'm in category five, and it has a subcategory one, two, and three flowers, art stitches, and ornament stitches. So basically what that means is, now let's get you looking at the panel. So what they mean by that is, is if I zoom in here to the panel, this is all category five right here, but subcategory one, which is 5.1, is all these stitches. Subcategory two is all these stitches. Subcategory three is all these, okay? So when I wanted to do this stitch that we were just playing with, I had to go to 5.3, okay? So another example is, let's say I want that whale. That's in 6.2, okay? So that means, let's get comfortable with the way that this machine thinks. It's really easy to kind of find what you want. So we want category six, 6.2 animals, and there's my whale, okay? And then I could sew him out, and he gets tell me the 2A foot stabilizer. Now, um, and then my tensions have changed, my length and all of that has changed accordingly. But 
let's say I don't want my whale going that way. Let's say I want my, my whale belly on the right hand side instead of the left hand side. We have these two keys here. So if I touch this one, the stop one, it mirrors um, horizontally, left to right. Okay, so see how my whale is turning left to right? Well, let's say I don't want his tail sewing last. I want his, his fan, I guess, no tail. Well, the back side of the whale. I don't want it sewing last, I want it sewing first. So this one right here is mirroring vertically. Okay, so just like, like this. And you can use them together so I can mirror horizontally and vertically. So you have complete control. Why would I want to do all that though? Is sometimes, again, if you're using this for a binding on a quilt or you're doing a decorative stitch on a blanket and you need it to go a particular way so you don't have to put the whole quilt or bag in this section you want hanging off to the side, and it would be easier if you could flip your stitch around. That's why we can do that. And uh, it's really fun to do. Okay, now let's go into your tools. You have a little cog right here, and this is called your tools. Okay, so it's right underneath your main menu. And in the tools, we have the capability of doing twin needle. And right now it's off, so if I just touch it, I can do up to an eight millimeter twin needle. And they do come, uh, I don't think there's a bigger one than eight at this time. And so your machine is a nine millimeter machine, so you can do eight or all the way as low as 1.6. So whatever your twin needle is, which is a single shaft needle with two needles coming out of it, you would tell it what size it is. And it's basically telling you the distance between the two needles. So let's say it was a 3.0. I'll touch a 3.0, and I'll touch OK, and look at my whale now. I have two whales side by side. The machine is smart enough that it shrunk my width to be able to use that 3.0 twin needle. Okay, so now if I go back into my tools, which is the cog, touch that twin needle again, let's see what will happen if I use 1.6. And see, now they're just a little bit, looks like a chunkier, fuzzy whale. The last one I would show you is, let's go back into your tools, twin needle, and say at 8. Now they just are straight lines. They can't make this, uh, they can't do anything else with this. You go and do a straight stitch with, a, with this anyways. But that's what it's done. It's actually defaulted me back to the straight stitch because of that. I can see that right here. So your machine has tools to help protect you from not breaking your needles. And so we do recommend you use those. So if I go back in here and come back, I want to turn off that twin needle. And the reason why I want to turn it off is it is a feature the machine remembers when I turn off the machine and come back. It doesn't matter if I come back in an hour or I come back six months later or even later than that. The machine will remember that the twin needle setting is on. So let's just show you what that will do. So if I did a two and press OK, let's go ahead and turn off the machine. OK. Now let's go ahead and turn it back on. Do, 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 do a little welcome screen. You'll hear it do some song and dance, which is all good song and dance. It's actually zeroing everything back to straight stitch. I want to say it's about 20 seconds upload. By the time you turn on your machine and plug in your iron and get out your project, your machine will be ready. So all those noises you just heard are good noises. It set the tension back to normal. It set my feed dogs and my pressure foot height, everything back to normal. But it remembers my twin needles on and it's still showing me twin, okay? So that would be something that if you just were in a hurry and you put it away and you forgot to take out your twin needle, it will remind you that you haven't told me you took it out yet. So you could check that out. Go ahead and go back in the cog and we are, which is settings, and we're going to press twin needle and say off. The next thing is to stitch with safety. By pressing this on, you are telling it that you might be putting on the straight stitch plate or you might be even using the quarter inch foot or the stitch in the ditch foot. And that means it's going to lock you from doing anything but needle center. So if I press OK, I now have this new symbol right here which is indicating that I am in straight stitch only. So if I try to come back in here and choose a zigzag, it's going to tell me machine set for center needle straight stitch. For all other sewing, deselect the stitch width safety in the setting menu, okay? So it's going to warn you. It's not going to allow you to change, so you won't break your needles, which is fantastic. So we'll go back into, oh, you got to get out of here. Go back into your cog. Um, I did that kind of fast. Let me show you what happened. It's when I tried to do this and it said I can't do it and I press OK, I'm still in my stitch menu. I cannot go into my settings. 
So to get my settings, I have to exit out, go into my settings, and now I can uncheck mark that. Pressure foot pressure, 6.5. This machine uh, has a sensor mat again to help uh, sensor your pressure, but sometimes we can give it something kind of spongy like uh, Polar Felice and some of the ones at Joanne Fabrics now and Hobby Lobby can get quite thick and mushy. And so sometimes the machine can have problems reading that. So you can actually change the pressure of your pressure foot. And that what that has to do with is when your foot comes down, it puts, puts a certain amount of poundage on your fabric to be able to have the feed dogs grab it and go. If it has too much poundage, it won't go as well as it should, or if it's too loose, meaning not, not enough weight, it will skirt. So you can actually increase or decrease this according to what you want by just touching it and changing how much pressure you want on it. Um, so if I was to change this and press OK, and press OK, I increase it so I put more poundage on it. Now if I go and change to a different stitch, go back into my setting, it's going to remember that. It remembered that I changed it, okay? Because I'm telling it I might be working on the same fabric over and over again. So from stitch to stitch to stitch, it's going to change it. Now let's check to see if it holds it when we turn it off. Because I'll be honest, I don't remember. I think it resets it, but let's go see it together. So as it powers on here. So the reason why you would again need to do that is if you're having a hard time and you're having to literally pull your fabric through, that might mean that you have too much poundage on your pressure foot. So you need to release some of it. So you would make that number a negative. Okay. So that would be a, how you can decide. So if I go in here and guess what? Um, it did go back to it did go back to default. So when you turn off the machine, it does reset that. That's good. Automatic pressure foot lift. This is actually comes when you first got get the machine out of the box and it is check marked. And the reason why it is check marked is it is letting you know that every time the needle goes down, the foot's going to lift into that pivot mode. And that's what I was showing you earlier with the straight stitch. If you don't like that and you want that foot to stay down when your needle goes down, then go ahead and come into your settings and uncheck mark this. Then your thread snips for sewing is also turned on so that when you use your automatic cuts and all that, it will automatically do that. If you don't want to and you need it to turn off, go ahead and turn off. If I go into my sewing machine here, also in my settings, you could change your language. You can have an auto audio repeat, meaning when it beeps at you and tells you it can't do something, or like when the bottom is getting low, it's going to keep sending that message over and over and over again until you tell it okay. I don't like that. I find it annoying, but uh, some people I do know like that. And then the other thing is the lock screen option right here. So the lock screen is going to allow me to touch this and press OK. And if you don't touch your screen, I want to say for about five seconds, the screen will lock and give you just one option to unlock it. Why would I want to do that? Uh, here it is. Screen is locked. Unlock. So, okay. The reason why I want to do this is if I'm working on something big and I'm working on something that's coming up here and constantly touching my screen like a quilt or something, or let's say you're making a fabric bowl and you're turning it and for some reason you're turning it this way, which you shouldn't be. You should be actually turning it to go around this piece here, the, the end piece. But let's say you're doing it here for whatever reason. If something brushes your screen, it can change your selection of your stitch right in the middle because this is a pretty sensitive touch screen, which is what we want. We want it to change when we touch it. But sometimes if something bumps it or if there's a lot of stack, static electricity in the air, it can select things when we don't want it to. So by doing a lock screen, the only way it can unlock is by something touching that exact spot of that okay. And then I can make my changes. Then again, if I let it sit, sit it's either three or five seconds again i think it's five seconds my would be eight it will come up and it will actually say lock screen again and it doesn't matter where i touch nothing will unlock it unless it truly says it on on there so i do use that feature when i'm quilting so i'm going to go back in and i am going to take off the lock screen let's say sometimes you touch your screen and it's not 
I touch it here, but it's selecting the OK, or it's selecting this above. It's not selecting what you think it's selecting. That means your touch screen is out of alignment. I find mine does this when I go from, um, I don't have air conditioning in my house, so if I have an extremely hot summer day and the next day it's like 20 degrees less, um, that extreme heat change, I find sometimes changes reaction of my screen. So I would go into my settings, and this is when you need to have your stylist. And I would touch my my uh, calibrate. And then what I do is where it, it tells you right on the screen what to do. Touch the center of each crosshair appearing on the screen. Use the stylus for more accuracy. And you need to be straight on it too. So I'm going to where that plus is. Okay, exactly where that plus is, right up there in the corner, the, the green one. I'm going to put my stylus right there and hold, and then release. I'm going to put my stylus in this corner, hold and release. Hold and release, and only allow the stylus to touch the screen. Hold and release, and then the last one. Hold and release. That just recalibrated everything back into my screen. Okay, so I can put my stylus away. So that's what the calibrating your screen is. If it's too far out and you cannot get, get it to select that calibration, you just bring it into us and um, we have a way to do it, okay? The next thing is information. This is just information about the machine, how much memory have you used, what software is it running, and all the licensing stuff, okay? So that's your settings. The next thing we have over here is um, let's go. Let's first go into our tools here. I mean, our menu and get 1.1.10, which is category one, subcategory one, stitch ten. So one, 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 ten. That's where I'm going. I have this other key over here, which is called um, uh, tapering. So I'm going to touch that, and this is going to allow me to taper my stitches. And see, remember, it has a triangle, so that means it has another menu inside. So if I long hold that, I have all these tapering options I can do. I'm going to do the 45, because that's the one I mostly do. And I'm going to touch the end one, and it's going to do the 45 in the opposite direction. And if I look at my screen, I can see it's tapered. So this is a great way if you're trying to do applique or put a quilt label um, or a name tag on something that you can use, or a patch, you can use this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start to sew, and it's going to start from that taper, and it's going to continue out. Now, before I stop, I do want to really quickly come into my tie-off features here, and I want to turn off the thread cut, okay? because I don't want to cut on what I'm doing. So I'm going to keep going here, and when I'm ready for it to start its taper, I'm going to hit that reverse key immediately, and it starts tapering down, okay? And then it's going to stop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink my needle down, and I'm going to turn this, and I have a red line back here on the back of my foot, and I'm going to try to keep that parallel to the stitch the best I can and then I'm going to continue forward. Now I'm pretty far away, I don't know if I actually got parallel or not, but you can get the idea. And I'm going to use my reverse key to say taper again. So automatically we'll start the tapering at the beginning and then it will taper at the end when you press the reverse. And then see, yeah, I didn't quite get where I wanted, but you can see the tapering and when you get it exactly where you need it, um, Part of the reason why I didn't is I should already had my needle down function down, so it took a stitch. But I can get these nice uh, taper stitches here. Okay, so we do when you uh, when you're ready to play with that. That is a fun thing to do, and, and you do have lots of options in there. And so now, if I go in and just deselect those, they come off. This one right here is actually allows me to build a sewing sequence. So when I open that up, I can go directly into my, my menu and I could go grab any stitch that I want and put it in there. So if I wanted to, I could come over to my hearts and I could grab like a heart, there's a heart, and then I can go back into here and go back into Maybe my animal stitches and grab a butterfly and then press OK. And now that made that sewing se sequence that I can sew over and over again. The other thing I can do is I can go back into my sewing sequence here. I'm going to trash can everything 
and say, okay, I, I guess, uh, okay, trash can everything. Now what I'm going to do is, let's say I want to tie off at the beginning, so I can tell that I want to tie off. And now I'm going to go back into my menu. Now I have over here an A. I could touch the letter A, and I have three alphabets built in here, and they're all nine millimeters in the top size. So basically, my favorite one is the comic, and I could come in here and I could spell my name. So C, then I can go to press this to get the lowercase, A-R-L-E-N-E, -E. and then I could say okay, and I could tell to do a tie off, and a cut, okay? And then I'm going to press okay. Now that has changed, okay? So now, all I have to do, and I don't, I'm not even going to use my foot control for this. I'm going to lower my foot, and then I'm going to use my start stop key, okay? Because I've already told it when I, what I want to do. So I'm going to use the start stop key, and away it goes. And I am at full speed, that's why I said it's a good idea to use it in tandem with your um, speed control, but that's okay. It's a short name, it's not a long sequence. Give the machine a little exercise. Okay, so now it's getting to the last letter and it'll tie off. And then it will scissor cut. And there we go. There it is. So I like to do this where I will make a table runner for somebody or a quilt and I usually have little small sashing or borders and on the front side of the quilt through the batting and everything I will generally write to, from, and the when I completed it. I never do when I started it because that's just embarrassing. So I do when I completed. Okay, so that is using your alphabet. So let's say I wanted to save that. If I wanted to save it, I would touch the heart and see, we have something that's already saved. It'll come up to a menu in 8.1. And if I, I have, um, let's see here, I have three menus with the, um, what am I trying to say? I have 8.1, 8.2, and 8.3, and 10 slots each. So I would touch the first slot I want. There it is and then I would exit out and now that's saved. So if I go into my main menu here, go back to my normal stitches, I could go back into my category and I'm on, so you have one through eight, touch eight. Here's my eight, my three menus. I could touch 1.1 and there it is. And I could bring it back up. So I could save it and bring it up at any time, which is really cool. So then how would I delete it if I wanted to get rid of it? So if I go back to here, um, if I touched my t trash can first, I could then touch what I want to delete and it'll ask me, do I want to delete that? And the, if I hit X, it'll be no, or touch trash can first, pick what I want to delete and press okay to be yes. All right. So you can delete anything in menu eight because those are your personal, but you cannot delete any of the stitches that are built in, which is a good thing. Okay, then I do have where I have this file folder here and I could access my USB stick if I had it plugged in, um, my personal file manager and all of that. That's getting pretty advanced, so we're just going to leave that for now. And one thing I do want to point out that's really cool is if you don't know what something is and you want to know it's an actual button. So let's say I don't know what this is here. I do know what it is. It's your tension, but let's say I didn't know that. If I touch the question mark touch what I'm asking about, it will tell me what it is and a little bit about it. And then I press OK. And then that question mark's turned off. So you touch the question mark first and what you want to uh, know about, and then it will tell you about it. OK? So that is your first class. Uh, I would recommend going on and playing. We do, uh, it's not done yet, but hopefully uh, this was done in January of 2021 and uh, soon what we're going to do is I will do a presentation of all the feet that come standard with the FOF machine so that it can be a separate video for those who want to see all the feet and why they work. So that one is coming uh, hopefully very soon, but uh, have fun with your machine. Write down all your questions. Feel free to call, come on in and let us help you out and happy sewing.